I guess I'm pretty lucky. I've been shooting for just over 30 years, and at this point in my career, I can afford to buy just about any camera I want. So why am I still shooting with a humble little X100V? Well, I started my street photography journey with an X100S way back in 2013, and in spite of some period-specific limitations with autofocus speed and general responsiveness, the camera allowed me to create some amazing images that inspired me to keep shooting. It literally opened the door to street photography for me. I had a brief love affair with a Leica M240, but when I reviewed the X100T, it reminded me exactly how capable these little cameras were and I ended up selling the Leica and going back to Fuji. Yeah, the Leica was great and everything, but it was a bit of a beast and I never loved the idea of walking around with $10,000 worth of camera around my neck. I mean, what if someone stole it? What if I fell down and smashed it on the ground? It was just too much. So the T did a great job for me. And when the X100F came out, I took it to Havana for a week of shooting and produced some of the best images I've ever made. There's just something about these little cameras that really fits with the way I shoot. Fast forward a couple years, and now we've got the X100V. Is this the best X100 ever? Well, yeah. And while it's just an evolutionary update, there's a lot about this camera to like. Here's a few things that stand out for me. Number one, they finally fixed the ISO dial. Fuji embeds the ISO adjustment dial inside the shutter speed dial on X100 and X Pro cameras. The idea is you pull up the outer sleeve that lets you rotate the ISO dial inside the shutter speed dial. It gives a more analog feel. It's supposed to save space on the camera layout. It sounds great on paper, but it's always been fiddly and difficult to use, and I've never liked it. But Fuji has made one change to the way this works on the X100V that makes all the difference in the world. Now, when you slide up that outer ring, it stays up. And you can freely rotate the ISO dial inside without having to hold it up or work against any springs. It means that you can adjust your ISO one-handed with your camera around your neck. It's kind of a no-brainer. The only thing I wish it had is I wish it had little detents for every ISO setting so you could feel the adjustment that you were making, but hey, one step at a time. This is light years ahead of where it was on the X100F, so good on you, Fuji. Number two, it's weather resistant, baby! Finally! Uh, now, according to Fuji, you still have to add the filter adapter. They say to get the Fuji one, I'm sure it works the same with, you have to add the filter adapter and a filter because the lens moves in and out as it focuses, so you have to kind of create a little seal there. But that works for the way I shoot anyways. I never keep a lens cap on the camera. I always put the filter adapter on and let the protective filter be my lens cap. That way, anytime I take the camera out of the bag, I'm automatically ready to shoot and I don't have to fumble with a lens cap that I never want to deal with in the first place. You can't take a picture if you have a lens cap on your camera. Throw your lens caps away and make your X100 waterproof at the same time. No, it's not waterproof. It's weather resistant. Fuji doesn't give us any specific values as to how much weather or, or moisture resistance is built into it, but it's a step in the right direction. What this means is now if you feel the slightest hint of rain or a single drop coming down, you don't have to run for cover for fear that your camera is going to get a little wet and explode. Now you can run for cover so you don't F up your hair, which is what I would do, because look at this. Huh? Hmm? All right, anyways, I'm not going to go swimming with this camera, but it's a step in the right direction. Again, way to go Fuji, very excellent. Number three, that all new Fujicron, like Fujicron. This is the first time in the history of the X100 series that they've touched the lens design. It's an all new optical formula with one extra aspherical element, plus the AF motors have gotten a bit of a speed bump. The older lens design had some issues shooting wide open, and apart from fixing glaring problems like that, this new lens shines in its own way. Colors are alive and vibrant, and there's plenty of that Fuji pop. Here's a few of my favorite pictures that I've shot with my X100V. Have a look for yourself. As always, don't judge the quality of these pictures based on a super compressed YouTube video. Head on over to streetshooter.com and have a look at the full-size images and the written review. It's worth the trip, and it costs you nothing. Number four, a little bit better LCD. 
but so they improved the resolution on the LCD screen to 1.62 million dots up from 1.04 on the F, which is great. But they also added a frickin' tilty screen, and I don't like it. Now, presumably people like the tilty screen so they can easily shoot from the hip and act like they're a ninja on the street or something. But that doesn't work for me. I'm a viewfinder kind of shooter, and it kind of bothers me to have features like this tacked onto my camera, knowing that I'm never going to use them. To Fuji's credit, they came up with an ingenious mechanism that sits perfectly flush to the back of the camera. It adds zero bulk. I can actually pretend. I've forgotten that it's even there. It's super slick, well implemented. There's virtually no wiggly bits to set up my OCD. I'd really rather there wasn't one there at all, but if I have to have one, I like the kind that disappears so I don't have to worry about it. Not bad. Number five, the hybrid viewfinder is everything. All right, the X100V has an updated version of the hybrid viewfinder that lets you choose between a traditional optical viewfinder and an all new OLED EVF. The optical side gets a nice little upgrade with 0.52 times magnification as opposed to 0.5 on the F. The optics are bright and clear, and it's actually my go-to viewfinder when I use the X100V. But the big news comes with the EVF. The X100V uses a 3.69 million dot EVF with 0.66 times magnification. That's up from 2.36 million dots and 0.64 on the F. It's an all new OLED panel that offers improved contrast and 100 frames per second refresh rate. And we're, we're finally at the point where this is no longer just usable. It's actually really good. The hybrid viewfinder is one of the original killer features of the X100 line. And this is the biggest advancement I've seen in any release to date. So good on you, Fuji. Number six, monochrome, 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 monochrome. Monica. Simpsons reference, because monorail. I learned to shoot black and white film when I was studying photography way back in the 19, way back in the 1980s. I don't want to romanticize this, but there's something to be said about the way that black and white film renders the world in lush, silvery tones. I've never been able to recreate that by shooting color and converting it to black and white in post. So I've stayed away from black and white in the digital age. Then I discovered Fuji's Acros film simulation. In particular, I use the Acros Plus YE that sort of simulates what it would look like if you were shooting black and white film with a yellow filter. Now, disclaimer, this is not a Fuji X100V exclusive feature. The Acros film simulation is in just about every Fuji camera at this point. It's not exactly new, but it's in there. And it makes this little camera a black and white powerhouse. So I'm including it in my list of things I like about this camera, deal with it. The Acro simulation maps tones beautifully and creates a lovely silvery image with just the right amount of mid-tone contrast. But it's also the way Acros handles grain. There are different patterns and amounts of grain in the highlights and shadows, and the higher you push the ISO, the more pronounced the grain effect becomes, just like on regular old film. Let's not fool ourselves, Nothing really duplicates the look of actual black and white film, but Acros is the best black and white film simulation that I've used on any digital camera. And yeah, I know, there's all the Leica monochrome variants, but those cameras are stupid expensive. Now, don't get me wrong, I'd love to have a Q2 monochrome or an M10 monochrome, but that would be a reward camera, not a practical solution. And to be clear, the Acros film simulation isn't a good enough solution. It's actually really good. I'm perfectly happy shooting it, so I'm going to keep doing it. So those are a few of the standout features for me, but that really doesn't answer the question of why I keep coming back to these little cameras year after year. I mean, at the end of the day, the X100V is just a step above a point and shoot camera. And while some people might think that's a limitation, I actually think that's why this camera is so attractive. It doesn't have room to try and be anything that it's not. There are a ton of cameras that run circles around the X100V specs. But in spite of everything this camera isn't, I keep producing excellent images with my trusty X100S T F4, now V, around my neck. I've shot with Leicas and Sonys and Ricohs, oh my, but, and for me at least, I'm always aware that I'm shooting with a Sony or a Leica or a Ricoh, whether it's the outrageous price of a Leica or the incomprehensible interface of a Sony, there's something about those cameras that stands between me and the act of shooting. But this, this unassuming little camera just gets out of the way and reminds me that I'm an important part of the image making process. I'm not shooting with an X100V so much as I'm just shooting.
And that's probably why I keep coming back to these cameras. So what do you guys think? Are you a fan of the X100V or do you find a smaller sensor and fixed lens a little too limiting? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'm trying to reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers and I'd love to have you on board. There's a ton of new videos coming up and I'd hate for you to miss any of them. But for now, I'm Carl from Street Shooter and that's enough for me. Now get out there and take some pictures already with your X100V. X100V is for... Very nice.